adventure has been in Tom Avery's blood all of his life. A pioneering climber and ski mountaineer, he's one of only 41 people in history to have reached both the North and South Poles on foot. Well, for me, my passion for the great outdoors started when I was a very young boy and started reading about the adventures of all the old explorers from you know, the Victorian times. And it just stirred something deep inside of me and I just really wanted to go out there and experience a little bit of what they endured. It's always been a gradual learning curve, but um, you know, I've had the most uh, yeah, incredible expeditions over the years. Avery began his outdoor career aged 16 with a series of rock and ice climbs in Wales and Scotland. Now 33, he's completed over a dozen expeditions across the globe and in 2002 spearheaded the team to the very bottom of the world. The expedition to the South Pole, journey of 1,200 kilometres across a barren wilderness of snow and ice. Temperatures typically down to minus 25, minus 30 degrees. Wind is the real problem and it's in your face most of the time. Although three days we managed to have winds in our favour and managed to get kites to help us. But to be honest, most of the time we were plodding along, skis on each foot, pulling a sled behind us that weighed, yeah, 85, 90 kilos. So, uh, yeah, incredibly physically demanding. One of the hardest things I've ever done. Along with frostbite and broken skis, Avery and his team faced the constant threat of altitude sickness. The South Pole's located 10,000 feet above sea level, but the low pressure system that hangs above Antarctica ensures it feels more like 15,000. The South Pole had filled my daydreams ever since I was a young boy, and just standing at that hallowed place at the bottom of the world by the red and white barber's pole that marks 90 degrees south, you know, it really did feel as though I had you know, achieved everything I wanted to in expeditions, but you know, it wasn't long before I started turning to the other pole, and of course the North Pole soon took over as the next goal. It's that subsequent expedition in 2005 for which Avery is perhaps best known. Described by the Guinness Book of Records as the fastest surface journey to the North Pole, his adventure retraced the footsteps of the original polar explorers. This American Robert Peary claimed to have got there in 1909, but a lot of people don't believe him because he got to the pole in just 37 days. And when you think most modern expeditions take 60, 70 days to get there, how on earth could this guy have done it? We set out to recreate his expedition, traveling with replica wooden sleds built on exactly the same design that he had, and tried to see by setting off from the same start point as Peary how long it would take us to get to the pole. Two years of planning, training and team building culminated in an intensive course working with Inuit sled dogs, the only way to travel through the conditions ahead. Well, the North Pole and South Pole are two completely different places because whereas the South Pole lies in the middle of Antarctica, the North Pole is actually located in the middle of the ocean. You have the currents, you have the winds which move this thin film of ice that floats on the Arctic Ocean. It buckles up against the coast of Canada, throws up these enormous ridges, 40, 50 feet in height, some of the big ones. And uh, I've never been in my entire life to anywhere so inhospitable as that. The team's epic 500 mile journey was beset by danger. At times, both dogs and explorers fell through the ice and into the freezing waters below, while Avery himself got lost in a blizzard. It's little wonder 80% of attempted expeditions to the North Pole fail to reach their target. Getting to the pole was more a relief than anything else and what made it so special is that we managed to get to the pole less than four and a half hours faster than Peary did all those years ago and whilst that doesn't prove that Peary definitely did conquer the pole all those years ago, I firmly believe that we've shown that he could have done so. Just that moment at the end when it was all over, we had put ourselves through so much just to get there and yeah, we were glad to go home. Avery is set to publish a more detailed account of that record-breaking journey next month in the form of his latest book, To the End of the Earth. But too long sitting still has left him hungry for his next adventure. The problem about being a polar explorer is that once you've been to both the South Pole and the North Pole, you've sort of run out of poles. So there are so many mountains out there that I'm desperate to climb. And this time next year, I'm embarking on one of the biggest expeditions of my life. It's all top secret at the moment, it's something no one has done before, but I cannot wait for it to start. It's gonna be one of the great challenges and roll on 2010.